All right, everybody. Um, we're doing something a little different today. It's not really a You Don't Know Deck Wednesday. It's more of um, talking to Marcy Wright again, who um, is the head of the, she's the director of the Health Information uh, Technology Program. And she's going to talk a little bit today about Blackboard and the security of it. And then we're going to kind of run through it for those of you who may having, still be having a little troubles with it or a little little problems with it. Um, she's going to run through it and kind of talk about what's going on. I'm going to ask questions along the way because it's new to me too. Um, and we'll kind of figure out some things from there. So Marcy, uh, I'll take it, give it away to you. Okay. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is share my screen so you guys can watch me go actually go through the um, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which is how we're doing our virtual classrooms right now. It's really Pretty neat. So let me try here. Share my screen. Share screen one. Um, okay. Let me get here. There we go. Can you see that okay, Kristen? Hold on. Let's see. Yes, we're good. Yep. Okay. So in Blackboard, we're so fortunate to honestly, I am I really feel blessed to have Blackboard um, at our college. It's a wonderful learning management system. And it has built into it this Blackboard Collaborative Ultra. And um, it's a tool that allows us to have a virtual classroom, kind of the same as what Zoom does, where you see all your students and everybody logs in. But it's, it's very secure. There, there's no chances of anything like what we've heard on the news of like Zoom bombing and that kind of thing because the students have to log, it, log in to their Blackboard um, class, which is, you know, they're put into that class as they have registered. So really the only people in my virtual classroom when I go into it through this Collaborate Ultra is my students. And so they are, they are seeing all this in their Blackboard shell. And just like Zoom works, we actually will log into um, the class time. And so you can see here, I have, this is my Tuesday, Thursday recurring class right now. That was our normally scheduled class this semester. Um, so we met at three on every Tuesday and Thursday. And so all I did was set up a um, session in here that was a recurring one. And so we've been doing this now for a couple weeks that my students just log in here and I lecture. They can see the PowerPoint that I pull up. Um, I pull up homework assignments, they ask questions, and um, I lecture. I mean, it's really, besides physically really getting to see everybody and um, more casually communicate, it really mirrors the real classroom very well. That's fantastic. One question. So with um, this portion, say um, if I'm in the three o'clock class, I can, I, and I'm not in the four o'clock class, say you had two sessions, can I only get into the three o'clock class? Students can only get into their section of the class? Yeah, they, so like my students that are in, this is my um, graduating semester students coding class. And so the only people that are in this class are those coding students. So if you're a student, and your teacher's meeting with, with you on Collaborate Ultra at your normal class time, when you go into Blackboard, you would log into that class. So like my, one of my other coding classes for my first year students is on Monday, Wednesdays. And so those students would go into their Blackboard shell for their class at their class time. They're, they're meeting at their normally scheduled class times that we were meeting face-to-face -face previously. We're just doing it through uh, Blackboard now. Very awesome. Yeah. And so my students that were normally attending this class would just log into this Blackboard shell. They would click this Blackboard Collaborate Ultra here, and then it would open this page. And when they come in here, then they would be able to join session, just kind of like we just did on Zoom. So I'm going to show you, because I created this test session for us this morning. Um, so I'm going to click on it. And the students would have a couple of options. They can either join their session straight from their computer here, or if they're using their cell phone, there's, the, there's an app on the cell phone for loading this, and so for loading Blackboard, and they can actually use their cell phone um, to join session. Or let's say they don't have their cell phone or a computer but they have access to a regular landline telephone, 
they can join the session here by dialing in on the phone and they can hear everything um, through the telephone. So there's multiple ways that the students can join. Um, and I've had students that have had different challenges. Um, one, for instance, ran out of um, their, their phone plans um, minutes, you know, or however, how much time they have to be on the internet. And so she just continued doing class, but she would dial in on a telephone instead um, of using the internet. So it's got multiple options, which has really kind of covered um, all the different types of problems that I've had to encounter so far. And so the students would just join session here. And it'll open up. I don't know what'll happen to us on this computer camera. <laughs> I've never tried to be in a Zoom and join Blackboard Collaborate. Be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we might get sucked out into some kind of internet portal, Kristen. I don't know some, what's going to happen. Internet black hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they would join the session and they would come in. And this is our room, our classroom. And um, you can see I have put my picture in there, um, which obviously is not the, my real picture. Okay. <laughs> but the students have done that too, where like one of my students is Fred Flintstone. Oh. So it's kind of cute, you know, yeah. everybody can kind of pick their little picture in there. And then they would, just like in, we did in Zoom, you, sh you would share your audio or video and um, students can raise their hand, which has oh. really worked out really neat. Um, they, if I'm lecturing, I can see that a student has raised their hand. They just click this little button and it'll say, you know, Marcy has raised her hand. And on my end of thing, I, I can see on my end who raised their hand. And so I can stop lecturing and, and call on them. Um, so there's lots of things for the instructor to adjust in here. I leave mine, my session open so that everyone can speak. And that kind of gets you know, hard sometimes because people will be talking over one another. <clears throat> and so there's other ways to set it up to where the, you know, the students don't have an open mic. I have the mic closed. And when I see them raise their hand, then I would go over and unlock their mic so that they could participate and speak like you call on them kind of that way. That's nice um, that people are talking over each other. I know I've had that problem because uh, I do Blackboard with my master's program. And at times, you know, um, whenever we're all on together, everybody tends to talk and it gets all jumbled. And that's a really nice option on this. Yeah. I also had the trouble of that weird echo. You know how it just will do that weird yeah. like ringing sound. So you can kind of shut off everybody's mic and that'll stop that from happening. Um, or people that maybe ha are at home and they have like, you know, dogs barking or whatever. And then, you know, you, you lock all that noise out so everybody can concentrate. And then when people raise their hand with that little raise hand button, then you go ahead and unlock their mic and, and they, they have their, op their opportunity to ask their question. Right. Another way that we've had um, people participating is, um, they can chat. Can you see my little chat button down here? So the students, um, I, I can ask a coding question and they will look it up in their book and they each will pop in their answer here. So they might say, okay, my answer is 99213 and they would post that in there and all my students then would line up. I could see, you know, every one of them lining up. What did they say is an answer? And um, you can see who got it right, maybe who didn't quite get it right. And then we discuss, like, why are there differences? Why did you get what you got and you got what you got? And um, it really turns into a really, it's been a really neat tool. It's actually a little bit faster than even in the classroom of calling on people because all of us instantly kind of see feedback in this little chat box. Right. So that has been really kind of fun and um, kind of really to me, very useful as an instructor. And so I can post questions over here. This is where my PowerPoint would show up. Let me pull it, let me pull up a PowerPoint here. <laughs> and so my PowerPoint would actually show up right there in that little window. Um, 
And as I lecture then, it just would be right in there um, or even a, ho a homework assignment or anything else would be, would be right there and available. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint and you'll see it'll, it'll pop in to, um, can you see that there yep. now? Uh -huh. Yeah, and so I can actually choose to, you know, make it full screen. Um, and then as I go through the PowerPoint, you know, just talking to my um, students like a normal lecture would be. Very cool. Yeah. And then the other thing that I do is I can pop up their homework there. And so if they have, we'll go over the homework and see if anybody's having problems or questions. Um, let me see if I have an example of some homework in here. <clears throat> This is very user friendly. I mean, once you get in and you kind of play around with it, it's it's not too bad. No, it's actually pretty easy to use. Um, I haven't had any kind of problems whatsoever. It, it's pretty straightforward. And the students, uh, my students have been awesome. Cool. Um, so here's something that, you know, if I wanted to share their homework assignment and go through it, we go over it, they ask questions. Awesome. Um, so it's, it is really pretty awesome. That is um, awesome. Yeah, and all my students have, <clears throat> I have been so proud of them because we came back online for school right after spring break. And so that Monday, as soon as spring break was over, my students all showed up in their classroom. Everybody got in. Nobody had any issues whatsoever. Um, and we just took off with class like normal. And so it, it was really awesome. And I think so our students are so capable of doing this. And they were really excited kind of to do it this way. It was actually our first week was really fun. Good. We did a lot of fun stuff. We've kind of joked about maybe doing a halftime show of karaoke, um, stuff like that awesome. on the horizon. <laughs> that is awesome. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Um, I, I love that we have this, you know, and you know, for all the students out there, um, this is going up on, I'm putting it on Facebook, I'm gonna have it on Instagram, and we're gonna have it on YouTube. So this is gonna be accessible to you at any time of the day, 24 seven, if you have any problems and you need to rewatch the video, we're putting it up. Um, also, you know, I'm going to put Marcy's information in, um, the comment section. So, you know, if you do have a question, you know, you can always reach out to her. She'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Yep. Uh, if you're an instructor or a student, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, we've been using this for several weeks now and it's awesome. I love it. It works great. Good. Is there anything else that you want to add about um, Blackboard, uh, you know, other little things that you can do with it or? Um, well, like I said, I, how I got my picture here, there's other things like here in the settings. Okay. This is where the students went in and you click on your name here and you can put whatever picture you want. And so there's other little settings here, kind of similar to Zoom where you're going to set up your camera or your, your um, microphone. <clears throat> yeah. And so there's other things, these session settings for instructors um, where you actually, this is where you pick you know, how you actually, um, who can share audio and how to turn people on and off as far as um, your actual session settings. So of course, as a student, your settings will look a little different. You won't have that option, but um, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, and so everybody can go into this little cog wheel here and you'll have your own <clears throat> option of settings that you can use to set up your, your little classroom. And um, whether you're an instructor or a student, the students also have options in there. And then um, this is my little instructor share content button. And so <clears throat> this is where I would go to pull up and put in this little box that says welcome my PowerPoints or my homework assignments. And then this actually turns into a list of everyone in the room cool. where I can see everybody that's joining who's missing. So if one of my stu students hasn't logged in yet, we just kind of chat until everybody gets in the room. And then I've already showed you the chat button and some of the neat things that it can do. 
Awesome. Yeah, it, well, it really is. It works really well. Well, good. I, I, and I'm glad it does. And like I said, students, uh, we're posting this. So if you have questions, please reach out to Marcy. If you're an instructor and you're unsure about a few things, reach out to Marcy. She's, she's got a great handle on it and she's doing awesome things with it. But um, thank you so much, Marcy, for being welcome. with us today. Um, and I'm glad that we can make this video for everybody out there. So um, join me again in the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll get some more videos up, some more tutorials, maybe some more you don't know decks. Um, and we'll keep connected with you guys. So stay safe, stay well, and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys soon. Bye, Kristen. Bye.